The Balrog of Moria, also known as Durin's Bane, is one of the most enigmatic and formidable creatures in J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle-earth. To understand why Sauron did not ally with or recruit the Balrog, it is crucial to delve into the nature of the Balrog itself. The Balrog, like Sauron, was a Maya, a spirit of great power created by Eru Iluvatar before the shaping of the world. The Maiar were lesser Ainur, powerful beings who helped the Valar shape and govern the world. However, not all Maiar were benevolent. Some, like Sauron and the Balrogs, were seduced by Melkor, later known as Morgoth, the first Dark Lord. The Balrogs, originally called Valarakur, were corrupted by Morgoth in the early days of the world. They became his most feared and loyal servants, known for their immense strength, fiery appearance, and terrifying presence. The Balrog of Moria, specifically, survived the War of Wrath the great battle that marked the end of the First Age and the downfall of Morgoth. Unlike Sauron, who sought to dominate Middle-earth, the Balrog seemed more interested in its own survival and seclusion. After Morgoth's defeat, it fled to the depths of the Misty Mountains, where it lay dormant for thousands of years. The Balrog's nature was inherently chaotic and destructive. It thrived on fire and shadow, embodying a raw and primal form of power that was difficult to control or direct. This chaotic nature made the Balrog an unpredictable entity, one that would not easily submit to another's will. Unlike Sauron, who sought order and domination through the creation of the One Ring and the subjugation of others, the Balrog's power was more primal and less structured. Its desire for autonomy and its inherent nature as a creature of chaos and destruction made it a challenging potential ally for Sauron. In the distant past, during the First Age, Sauron and the Balrogs served under the same master, Morgoth. This shared history provided a backdrop of familiarity between the two dark entities. However, their relationship was not one of equals. Sauron, even in the First Age, was already a powerful sorcerer and a master of deceit second only to Morgoth in his cunning and ambition. The Balrogs, while formidable in their own right, were more akin to enforcers, wielding brute strength and fear rather than subtlety and guile. During the First Age, Sauron and the Balrogs participated in many of Morgoth's campaigns against the Elves and men of Middle-earth. The Balrogs were often at the forefront of battles, spreading terror and destruction wherever they went. Sauron, on the other hand, often took on a more strategic role, using his powers of sorcery and manipulation to further Morgoth's aims. This difference in roles highlighted the distinct approaches of Sauron and the Balrogs to warfare and domination. The fall of Morgoth at the end of the First Age marked a significant turning point. The Balrogs were scattered, and many were slain. The Balrog of Moria, however, managed to escape and went into hiding deep beneath the Misty Mountains. Sauron, too, went into hiding, but eventually re-emerged with his own ambitions for dominance. The millennia that followed saw Sauron gradually rebuild his power and influence, culminating in the creation of the One Ring. During this time, the Balrog remained hidden, biding its time in the depths of Moria. The historical context suggests that while Sauron and the Balrog were once allies of convenience under Morgoth, their paths diverged significantly after his fall. The Balrog's retreat into isolation and Sauron's pursuit of his own dark empire set them on separate trajectories, making any potential alliance in the Third Age unlikely. The Balrog's retreat to Moria was not merely a matter of survival but also one of isolation. After the fall of Morgoth, the Balrog fled to the depths of the Misty Mountains, where it remained undisturbed for millennia. This seclusion was both a strength and a weakness. On one hand, it allowed the Balrog to avoid detection and destruction. On the other hand, it cut the creature off from the evolving power dynamics of Middle-earth. Moria, known to the dwarves as Khaza Doom, was once a grand and prosperous dwarven kingdom. However, the Dwarves' relentless mining for Mithril, 
eventually disturbed the Balrog, awakening it from its long slumber. The creature's emergence led to the fall of Moria, as the dwarves fled from Durin's bane, abandoning their once great city. The isolation of the Balrog in Moria meant that it was largely disconnected from the world outside. Sauron, during his rise to power in the Third Age, would have had little reason or opportunity to make contact with the Balrog. The creature's deep-seated hatred and hostility towards intruders made it a dangerous entity to approach. Moreover, the Balrog's focus on its own domain meant that it was unlikely to seek out alliances or subjugation under another Dark Lord. The Balrog's isolation also meant that it was unaware of Sauron's machinations and ambitions. While Sauron was consolidating power in Mordor, forging the One Ring, and amassing armies, the Balrog remained a solitary figure in the depths of Moria. This separation created a gulf between the two dark powers, making any potential alliance or recruitment highly improbable. Sauron's strategic goals in the Third Age revolved around the domination of Middle-earth through the power of the One Ring. His approach was characterized by careful planning, manipulation, and the forging of alliances with various dark forces, including orcs, trolls, and men who were susceptible to his influence. Sauron's strategy required a level of control and a coordination that the Balrog, with its chaotic and independent nature, would have disrupted. The Balrog's immense power was both an asset and a liability. While its strength and terror could have been valuable in battle, its uncontrollable nature posed a significant risk. Sauron needed allies who could follow orders and contribute to his overarching plan of subjugation. The Balrog, with its tendency towards destruction and its lack of interest in the political or strategic aspects of warfare, did not fit this mold. Furthermore, Sauron's ultimate goal was to dominate all of Middle-earth through the One Ring. This required a delicate balance of fear, influence, and control. The Balrog, with its propensity for indiscriminate destruction, would have been more of a blunt instrument than a strategic asset. Sauron's reliance on the Ring also meant that he preferred servants who were susceptible to its influence and corruption, something that the Balrog, as a powerful and independent Maya, was unlikely to be. In essence, the Balrog's nature and Sauron's strategic needs were fundamentally incompatible. Sauron's approach to domination was built on manipulation and control, while the Balrog thrived on chaos and destruction. This fundamental difference in their methods and goals made any potential alliance between them highly unlikely. The Balrog's independence was a key factor in its isolation and its refusal to ally with Sauron. After the fall of Morgoth, the Balrog retreated into seclusion, indicating a desire for autonomy rather than submission to another dark power. This independence was not just a matter of physical isolation, but also a reflection of its nature as a Maya. Unlike many of Sauron's other servants, who were bound to him through fear, corruption, or the influence of the One Ring, the Balrog operated on its own terms. Its power was innate and not derived from any external source, making it less susceptible to Sauron's influence. The Balrog's self-reliance and pride as a powerful Maya meant that it was unlikely to accept a subordinate role under Sauron. Additionally, the Balrog's experiences under Morgoth might have further reinforced its desire for independence. Serving Morgoth, the Balrog had witnessed the downfall of a powerful Dark Lord and the eventual scattering and destruction of his forces. This history could have instilled a sense of caution and a reluctance to become entangled in another Dark Lord's ambitions. The Balrog's autonomy was also a reflection of its personality and temperament. Unlike Sauron, who was a master strategist and manipulator, the Balrog was a creature of raw power and primal fury. Its interests lay in its own survival and dominion over its immediate surroundings, rather than in grand schemes of world domination. This focus on self-preservation and autonomy 
made it a poor candidate for recruitment into Sauron's intricate plans. The One Ring was central to Sauron's strategy for domination. Forged in the fires of Mount Doom, the Ring was imbued with a significant portion of Sauron's own power, allowing him to control and dominate other beings. However, the Ring's influence had its limits, particularly when it came to other powerful beings like the Balrog. The One Ring worked by amplifying Sauron's inherent powers of manipulation and control, making it easier for him to bend others to his will. It was particularly effective on beings with inherent weaknesses or vulnerabilities, such as men, who were easily corrupted by power and greed. The Ring also had a strong influence on the Nazgul, former kings of men who had been completely subjugated by its power. However, the Balrog was a Maya, a being of immense power and will. Its nature as a spirit of fire and shadow, combined with its status as a former servant of Morgoth, meant that it was far less susceptible to the Ring's influence. The Balrog's power was intrinsic, not derived from external sources, and its will was strong enough to resist the corrupting influence of the Ring. Furthermore, the Balrog's history and experiences under Morgoth would have made it wary of another Dark Lord's control. Having served one master and witnessed his downfall, the Balrog was unlikely to willingly submit to another. The One Ring, while powerful, was not a guarantee of control over such a formidable and independent entity. In summary, the One Ring's power was not absolute. While it allowed Sauron to dominate many beings and build his Dark Empire, it was not enough to compel the Balrog into submission. The Balrog's intrinsic power, combined with its strong will and desire for independence, made it resistant to the Ring's influence. The Balrog's relationship with the Dwarves of Moria provides additional context for its isolation and its lack of alliance with Sauron. The Dwarves, in their quest for Mithril, delved too deeply into the depths of the Misty Mountains and inadvertently awakened the Balrog. This event, known as the Awakening of Durin's Bane, led to the downfall of the Dwarven Kingdom of Khazad-dûm. The Balrog's emergence in Moria caused widespread destruction and terror. The Dwarves, despite their strength and resilience, were unable to withstand the might of Durin's Bane. The Balrog's presence turned Moria from a bustling dwarven metropolis into a haunted and abandoned ruin. The creature's focus on its new domain meant that it had little interest in the outside world, let alone in forming alliances with other dark powers. Sauron, during this time, was consolidating his own power in Mordor. While he undoubtedly would have been aware of the Balrog's presence in Moria, the creature's preoccupation with its own territory meant that it was not a priority for Sauron. The Balrog's role as the bane of the dwarves kept it occupied and isolated, making any potential alliance with Sauron both logistically challenging and strategically unnecessary. Moreover, the dwarves' fear and hatred of the Balrog created a natural barrier to any potential recruitment efforts by Sauron. The Balrog's enmity with the Dwarves was a long-standing and deeply rooted conflict. Sauron, who sought to manipulate and control various factions to further his own ends, would have found the Balrog's singular focus on its own territory and enemies a significant obstacle. The Fellowship of the Ring's encounter with the Balrog in Moria further illustrates the creature's solitary nature and reluctance to ally with outside forces. When the Fellowship entered Moria, they inadvertently awakened the Balrog from its slumber. The creature's immediate and violent response underscored its territorial nature and its disdain for intruders. The confrontation between the Fellowship and the Balrog was a pivotal moment. The Balrog's immense power and ferocity were on full display as it pursued the Fellowship through the halls of Moria. Gandalf's subsequent battle with the Balrog on the bridge of Khazad-dûm highlighted the creature's relentless and destructive nature. The Balrog was a being of raw power and fury, driven by its own instincts rather than any external influence. This encounter demonstrated that the Balrog 
was not interested in alliances or subjugation. Its focus was on destroying any who dared to enter its domain. This territoriality and independence were key factors in its isolation and its lack of cooperation with other dark forces. The Balrog's actions during this encounter further reinforced the idea that it was a solitary and autonomous entity uninterested in the broader conflicts of Middle-earth. While the Balrog remained isolated in Moria, Sauron was actively building alliances and recruiting various dark forces to further his goals. Sauron's primary allies included the Nazgul, orcs, trolls, and corrupt men. Each of these groups played a specific role in Sauron's strategy for domination. The Nazgul, once kings of men, were entirely under Sauron's control, bound to him by the power of the Nine Rings and the One Ring. They served as his most trusted and fearsome lieutenants, spreading terror and enforcing his will. The orcs, bred and corrupted by Sauron, formed the backbone of his armies. They were numerous, expendable, and easily controlled through fear and brutality. Trolls and other dark creatures added brute strength to Sauron's forces, while corrupt men provided political influence and additional military power. These alliances were carefully cultivated and maintained by Sauron's strategic use of fear, manipulation, and the promise of power. Each of his allies had specific vulnerabilities that Sauron exploited to ensure their loyalty and obedience. In contrast, the Balrog's independence and inherent power made it difficult, if not impossible, for Sauron to exert similar control. Sauron's existing allies were also more predictable and manageable compared to the Balrog. The Nazgul, orcs, and other dark creatures could be directed and controlled in a way that the Balrog could not. The Balrog's unpredictable and destructive nature would have made it a liability in Sauron's carefully orchestrated plans. Ultimately, the thematic reasons behind Tolkien's decision to keep Sauron and the Balrog separate enhance the narrative and symbolic aspects of Middle-earth. The separation of these two dark powers serves to highlight their distinct roles within the story and the broader mythology of Middle-earth. Sauron represents the archetypal Dark Lord, a master of manipulation and control who seeks to dominate all life through his cunning and the power of the One Ring. His character embodies the corrupting influence of power and the desire for absolute control. In contrast, the Balrog symbolizes a more primal and chaotic form of evil, one that is driven by instinct and raw power rather than strategic ambition. By keeping these two entities separate, Tolkien underscores the diversity and complexity of evil within Middle-earth. Not all dark forces are aligned or cooperative. Some are solitary and autonomous, driven by their own desires and nature. This separation also enhances the sense of danger and unpredictability in the world, as different forms of evil pose distinct threats to the characters and their quests. Moreover, the thematic separation emphasizes the different challenges faced by the protagonists. While Sauron's influence is pervasive and requires a concerted effort to counteract, the Balrog's threat is immediate and physical, demanding bravery and sacrifice from those who confront it. This duality enriches the narrative, providing depth and variety to the obstacles encountered by the heroes of Middle-earth. In conclusion, the reasons why Sauron did not ally with or recruit the Balrog are multifaceted and deeply rooted in the character's natures, histories, and strategic needs. The Balrog's chaotic and independent nature, combined with its isolation and territoriality, made it an unsuitable and undesirable ally for Sauron. The thematic implications of this separation also enhance the richness and complexity of Tolkien's world highlighting the diverse forms of evil and the unique challenges they present.